change this? Should I change that? Should I focus more on this? Should I focus more on that? They're very responsive. Um, they may be celebs, but they're not like Hollywood celebs that are just going to brush off and ignore you. If you have legitimate questions, they will answer. In fact, I got a, tw I got a, uh, a Twitter response from Linkara, who does a Talk the Fourth Wall. I don't know if you all know him. Um, uh, talking about, oh, I'm so exhausted. I've already done two, I've already done a couple panels, and I'm already exhausted. How do people do this? He responded in a parental flash response. Um, granted, it was short and short, sweet to the point, but they responded. Um, so they're there. Never feel like you can't ask questions. Ask questions if if you if uh, you've got some for these people, or um, if you want to do a different kind of show, you know, just away from gaming or away from that this sort of medium. Um, Talk to people in your field, even if they're really, really established, they'll help you. Um, and again, find help in the community you get established in. I'll say it one last time. Um, the people already in your community, everyone has diverse skills. Some people may be good at art, some people may be good at music. Find those people and collaborate. Know your audience. Have a firm idea of who you're trying to educate or entertain. Um, there's a lot of people with a lot of shows that say, I think this is a good idea. What about, who's your audience, you know? Who else is going to think this is a good idea? I don't know. Your show is dead. Your show is dead before it gets off the ground. So you, you that's, again, you desperately have to know who it is you're talking to and why should they care. Um, don't spread too thin. Don't try to find a topic that a whole bunch of people are going to be interested in. I've seen a handful of people uh, try to start a show where they just want to make money. They're like, oh, this is a really cool idea, so let's do this and it's going to make money. And they spread themselves too thin. Uh, they weren't, they were talking about too many things, uh, or something like that, and it just didn't work out because it, it couldn't, no one could relate to it. But don't be afraid to experiment, just experiment in moderation. If you want to try a new idea, try it. But just try one idea, or maybe two. Don't go completely crazy. Don't completely change your show around like mid-season or something, because uh, it'll be jarring for people. You know what's going in and what's out. How stale is your genre getting? For me, um, I've had some people say, well, maybe if you were angry when you were talking about your stuff, it would be interesting. I do that time to time. It's very, very rare, because I really don't think that the angry review genre is going to be around in the next five years. I think people are getting really tired of it. Um, I just watched the latest uh, Angry Video Game Nerd episode, and I'm like, this feels dated, because it's just, it's just anger, 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 anger. And after a while, you're tired of watching people be angry because it's not funny. The Nintendo versus Sega one? Yeah, it was the, well, it wasn't that one. That one was actually really good because it was a lot of analysis and he used his past self. And that was clever. Um, but the one before that, I can't remember what the game was. Um, I think it was Aliens, or, or it was Honor Schwarzenegger games. Yes. And it was just angry, 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 cursing, 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 cursing. I'm like, get on with it. <laughs> Something fresh. So just be careful of that. Um, has your genre succeed with different styles? Now I'll go back to John Tron. Um, he's been incredibly successful because he brings a new twist to that genre. Um, whether it be his accent, his comedic timing, because it's more funny than it is angry. Uh, and, and I think that's what makes it work so well. And just because your genre is fizzled, fizzled out once doesn't mean it's going to again. Um, if you thought that, when, if, if you saw someone try to do a type of genre when it came to a video, and no one really cared about it, but you think you can put a different spin on it and make people like it, try it. There's no harm in trying. Understand the risk of copyright infringement. Plagiarism. The backbone of our shows is the fair use clause. Um, so basically, if, uh, if you're analyzing something, if you're analyzing a video game, a song, a movie, anything like that, um, it's okay. Y'all take care. Um, make sure you're analyzing it, because if you use it out of context, you can very easily get sued. Um, the reason why a lot of people have been very successful, like Angry Video Game Nerd, John Tron, Spoonie, all these guys, is because they're so stinking popular. Um, all the music, all the games that they're talking about, or even um, the Nostalgia Critic. Like, I remember how much, uh, when he did his review for The Room, he had to take it down because of legal problems. And then he said, well, I'm sorry you don't like free exposure, and that's what it was. After that episode, people were like, 
I want to know what this is about. What, you know, this, this movie is so terrible, but it seems kind of interesting in a way. So just, just be careful. Um, if you're going to use music for your show and you're not analyzing it, um, and you plan to monetize on it, make sure it's original. Because I think the law stipulates that you can only have 30 seconds of music up at one time. Now, admittedly, for one of my episodes, I had a whole bunch of Mario music playing in the background, but Nintendo doesn't seem to mind too much if you use some of their music, just because they're so big. Um, if you're really going to pick this business, probably going to have just a dog and a computer. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I just talked about this analysis versus parody. Um, Parody is okay. Rental Floss. He's able to actually make money off of his CDs because everything that he does is a parody. I still don't know how he gets away with it, but he does, and it's good. Um, yeah, use, uh, use parody instead of a primary source is never possi possible for me. Uh, I just did a Pokemon episode, and I had one of my guys do a rock version of the original Pokemon theme, and it sounds awesome. And we can do it because it's a parody. Be extra careful of music and sound effects. I just got done talking about that. Keep it to 30 seconds. Um, you can go, if you can take a sound effect and pull it into an audio editor and like maybe change the pitch like five hertz or, uh, and, and it's fine. Most of the time. <laughs> just be careful. Um, let's see here. Credit everyone and everything that you can um, for, the, for your guests for the pictures that you use, if you use pictures, video, credit everyone. Always, always, always. I've seen a lot of people, and I don't know how, John Tron's one of them, he doesn't really credit um, either the, the video game he's analyzing or some of the images that he uses, and I'm like, you're popular, popular enough, bro, so you can get away with it, and that's, that's fine, but when you're first starting out, credit everyone, because they expect it, they want it, and if you do, they'll come back. Uh, find musicians and artists to create parodies of your original work. That's what I did. My Goomba character is based off of a Goomba, but isn't necessarily one. It just looks a heck of a lot like it. Um, do I? I appreciate that. I want to make plushies, but I can't find a distributor. <laughs> Patience, young grasshopper. No unestablished series becomes famous overnight. I don't care what anyone says. This holds true. No one is po no one gets popular overnight. Um, James Rolfe, Angry Video Game Nerd, did not get popular overnight. It took, I think it took about a year or so. I've only been at this about six months, and I'm already pretty popular, but again, I got lucky talking to the right people. Um, if you don't do that, it's going to take far more time. I expect very harsh criticism, like I said before. I expect people to call your, your video stupid. I expect people to say it sucks. They're going to. Um, this is when the trolls come out and play, is brand new meat. And I just almost fell down. Expect a year before you get noticed by the thousands. You just have to have patience to make to just wait it out, let the community and again it's, it's gonna depend if did you find a community, are you relating to that community? So you you've got to watch that. Things that will get you noticed faster. First of all, sex of you. Um Aggie's character, well that is Aggie's character right there. Um she's gonna be she's been in the show a little bit, she's gonna be more in. And I wouldn't necessarily call that sex appeal, but more or less a broadening of demographic. Because it's a female character. Um, some people that have pulled off the sex appeal and made it work, artist gamer gal, I don't know if you've ever heard of her or the screen team. The screen team show especially because it's a nerdy guy and a really hot girl with like constant doubly pushed up massive exposure. Um, and really like every other comment is boobs, tits, look at them jumps. So, <laughs> really, but they get views by the tens, if not hundreds of thousands. Um, Pokemon, don't ask me why, but any time I've ever done an episode, and this is speaking mostly when it comes to video game uh, web shows, but every time I've, I've ever seen a Pokemon episode, or a, a Pokemon analysis episode, or whatever come up, hundreds, thousands of views, so many comments. Um, when I did my Pokemon episode, I've gotten more views and more comments from those than any other episode I did. I don't know why, but it's just a huge worldwide phenomenon. Um, Team Fortress 2, since the release of since there was the release of the Source Filmmaker, 
Um, I'm seeing the stupidest movies that's been made in the source filmmaker get hundreds of thousands of views simply because it's the source. So uh, if you can find the newest technology, give them some razzle dazzle, it works. I'm not sure why. And again, highlighting your community, telling other people about the community that you're in.